Hi, this is Charlene Mosier from Buff Creative Sewing Center, Lacey, Washington, and Sound Sewing, Soweto, Washington. We just completed a part one of our lettering fonts. Um, I'm breaking this down into, I'm trying to do in 15 minute sections so that they're not too overwhelming. Um, so this is part two. Um, this is uh, the one that we just did, the cheese and mice in the part one. And uh, so if you haven't watched that video, you want to see how we do that, I really uh, invite you to go and watch that on our YouTube channel. So here in the part two, I had mentioned that we are going to uh, see how we can find fonts by searching for them and also how we can make our own fonts. And I make a lot of my own fonts. And with this software, it's just incredible. It's so easy to do. I just love it. So what we're going to do is I am just going to clear my screen. So I'm going to do a control A on my keyboard to do a select all. And I'm just going to delete it right off by hitting delete. So again, if you miss that, I did a control A and then a delete. Just a real quick way to delete everything. I'm going to go back into my lettering tab up here, up on the top. Um, because I was just doing uh, lettering in here for part one, it's remembering everything I have done last time. Uh, and that's okay. So let's say I want to find a font, but I cannot remember where it is, what category. I can actually do that inside the Premiere Plus 2 Font Manager. So I'm going to click on the Font Manager. You only need to click on it once to open it. My computer wants to do an update, so it's kind of running a little sluggish. But there we go. So all your fonts that are built in here, remember you have over 210 fonts, uh, are located in here. And they're in here by their categories again. And so if I want to go to floral, I can just come here and click on floral. And I can come and click on them. And over here in the preview, I can go ahead and see what they look like. So if I wanted to come down here to fun, and let's say I want to go to archery. And that's kind of fun, where they're using arrows and archery items to make the font. Uh, brush block. So this is one way I can just go in and see them. It is faster just to come up here and open up the viewer, but sometimes it's overwhelming while you're doing that. But let's say I was doing this uh, a font the other day and I was working in here and I didn't save what I was doing, but I remembered it had three colors. So I can actually do a search on that part of the software. So down here, I'm going to go down to search and I'm going to click in here. I'm going to write 3C for three color. And then press enter and everything that comes that's three color is going to come up. It's going to tell me where it's at. So these two are in effects. This one here is in elegant. I have one in floral and I have one in fun. And that way I could go and that's one way I could find them. Let's say that I remembered it was a script. I can write script and just happens script does is a category so everything in script would come up automatically but you could do that too maybe I didn't realize that there was a category in script but I knew it was a script font so the other thing you could do is I could come down here and uh, search for size so I can say you know I need to make sure that I can do it about an inch so I need to be 25 millimeters or I can actually just type number one with the quotation marks behind it to represent inch and I'm going to also tell it that I want it to be plus or minus five millimeters because I could easily turn that into one inch and everything that does a everything that qualifies in there will show up okay so you'll see I have a lot that I could do at one inch so 15 to 50 millimeters there's this guy here under scary um, ghoulish I think that was kind of fun too and so I can actually scroll through here and there's some under traditional um, so here's one right here which is the line block 3 to 20 millimeters the reason why that one's coming up is because I did a plus minus of the 5 millimeters so that means it could go as low as 20 millimeters and as high as 30 millimeters and still come in it, uh, and that's because you can, again, change these sizes slightly. As long as you're not going too extreme, you can uh, make this font work. So there's another, there, there's one way you can uh, search. You can also, uh, gosh, it's just unlimited what you can do. So what I do want to show you, though, before I get too sidetracked here, 
is we had talked about making your own font. And to make your own font, that's done right here in the quick font. So I'm just going to open up that real quick by just clicking on this QF. This is a, another program inside the program, so it's going to take it a second to pull it up. There it is. So what the quick fonts does for you is it does kind of like a quick scan of your computer, and it's looking for any uh, true type font that is available to you. So a true type font would be a, a Microsoft or a um, or even a um, Apple font. So, uh, so a Mac and a Microsoft font. Those are true type fonts. There are other fonts out there which are Adobe fonts. They can be turned into into true type fonts, but your software can only change over true type fonts. If you do have one of those Adobe's and you want to get it converted, all you would need to do is come down here to type here for a search and you can ask how to change a font to a true type font and it will tell you the instructions on your computer on how to do that. But let's go ahead and look and see what my computer came up with. So I have Word and Publisher and quite a bit of uh, internet uh, software so you'll find that I have a lot of fonts in here. You will too even if you don't have certain um, font building programs every computer has a structure of fonts inside it and you will find them in in this menu here so a lot of times you will just go to look for like a style not necessarily a actual font type if you truly are looking for a true type of font you can actually uh, find it in this list I'm going to do impact so this is what impact looks like and right here, I'm going to do a down arrow, and um, I was playing earlier, so it's remembering I did bold. It would have normally come up at regular, but I can make this regular, bold, italic, or bold italic. So if you want to make this into, for instance, an applique, using an applique fabric, I would probably say bold to make it more beefier so you can use more fabric. So let's go ahead and do that, because I think I'm going to make this into a, um, well, I'm going to show you a lot of different types you can do. So here is my file type here. Um, it does go by default to using your Premiere Plus 2 embroidery system. I do recommend that. You do have an option though for making it for your embroidery machine, but at that point you would be either saving it on your machine or putting it on a USB stick and using your machine to build your words. And then that's where it's always going to be. By using it in your Premiere Plus 2, it's going to go into the My Fonts category of My Font. Uh, menu. So I do recommend that because you can use it at any time right on your computer. Character set. The character set, the best way I can explain this is basically this has to do with um, our world and how it's broken down in uh, language structure. So if I was to do Greek, these would really come up as Greek letters. So if I was going to do Hebrew, the same thing. Okay, and these are not always available in every font. It just depends if that font has these characters built into it. If I do extended, um, if I'm going to do uh, our area, so Canada, the U.S., and Mexico, I want either extended or super extended. And so super extended is going to give me a lot more specialty characters. Um, if I know I'm not looking for that, I'll just do extended. And so that's what we want to stay in our, our region. Then I just come down here and go next. So then it's going to come up and it's going to build a, a sample structure for me. So these are samples according to what type of stitch is built here. I'm just going to show you a couple different ones. I did say I am going to make this into an applique because there is something I do want to do for a later class. So this is the font I am going to want to use. But I do want to show you though, if I down arrow, I can make it a satin, I can make it a pattern fill, pattern fill with satin border, satin border only. Applique, which is going to give me the applique uh, steps and just an outline. So right now, because I have it as applique, I could come down here and I could see that my size sizes are from 80 millimeters to 120. So if I put my mouse on here, this is saying that's about three inches and um, a quarter, actually a little less than that. And then this is almost four inches and three quarters. So I. Uh, 
that's telling me what they are right now as my size range. But I also see recommendations that my minimum can be set at 50 millimeters. And I can't show you where that's, see that pop up? I'm, I'm looking on that pop up. Okay, so my minimum can be as small as 50 millimeters, which is just shy of two inches, and as big as 200 millimeters, which is um, seven and, I wanna say seven eighths, but close. So that's the size that I can do with the uh, applique. So if I come here and change this to satin, these numbers change 12 millimeters to 30 millimeters. And then my alphabets are changing too. And because I made this bold, this may not be appropriate. And so the minimum here is I can do is about seven millimeters and the max I could do is 50 millimeters. So no matter what I select up here, so if I go to pattern fill now, what I select up here, it will rebuild my structure over here of what that font can look like. And it's giving me new recommendations, but it's also telling me where I could set those recommendations at. So even though this one says 20, it says I could go as low as 10, but as high as 200 millimeters. When you do the pattern fill, you also can, uh, so this is a pattern fill, it's just coming up as a generic fill, but right here I can actually select stitch options. And then stitch options, I'm not gonna to get too crazy in here, but I do wanna do this pull down arrow for you. And in the stitch options, I can open up that pull down menu and I have over 256 textured fills at my fingertips in here, which are located throughout the whole program that I can make this fill. So let's say I wanna make it this brick. In the brick, I could change my density. I could also change the angle of it so that I can make it look more so 360 be straight across, but then I can also change my underlay. If my density is getting really low, I wanna make sure my underlay is a little bit higher, okay, to help support that. And then I could click okay, and it will come in here and again, rebuild my structure here that you can see these bricks now. And because I did them at 360 degrees, this is the normal way for that font, okay? So you really have unlimited, so even though I've, I've picked this one font name, I could digitize this many times as I want and get a whole lot of different end results. But I'm gonna go just go back to the applique here because again, there's something I do wanna do. So I'm going to use this one and here it builds up again. And I felt with the applique, this is the better way to see this. I am going to make my maximum all the way up to the top 200 for something I wanna do. So now, as this is building, I do have the capability of here of looking at my colors down here. So I could do a border thread color and an applique color. So the thread color is grayed out because this gray area in here is actually considered fabric, so I can't change that. But I could go into my border color here and click on that. It's coming up red, and let's say I want it blue. I could just quick link it to blue, which I did by just clicking there and coming down and clicking my OK. And now it will change to blue. Then I could also come into my applique fabric right here. This is a big part of the, there's a lot of uh, fabric saved in here. So it's gonna take it a second, my computer. Or longer. <laughs> As we're waiting for that to come up. Um, it is kind of stopped the, the build of this because I've asked it to bring up this applique. Hopefully my software won't stop responding. Uh, but the real size of this right now is saying that this is only 16% of the real size and that's because I have chose such a, a big font here. The other thing is the, uh, my joining, I did not change this or discuss it, so I will right now is um, I'm just doing a baseline. So that means they're just gonna kind of always join on the bottom here. I like that better than nearest point because nearest point, it can give you strange jumps and small little jumps. I'd rather be a little bit more consistent and have the joint down here. And the last one, let me move that over, was continuous. If you were doing something that is supposed to be joined together, that is like handwriting, like a script, you would want to do continuous so that it looks like it's flowing, like it's done as a cursive. So here is my fabric select. 
I can either do the quick picks of different colors here so I can make uh, color choices. I could also um, go in and select, uh, actually no, that's all they're letting me do is the quick picks. The other ones are grayed out. Oh, that's different, okay. Normally these aren't grayed out and I could actually choose a fabric and open up my fabric options and go get one of the many fabrics that are built in here. Uh, you can also uh, tell that you want to do a, um, you could do cutouts, so you could do them with um, iron transfer and print these out. You could do a lot of different things. To make this just look a little bit better, because I did choose a blue fabric, I want to do just this color here. And then I'm going to print. Uh, these here, these recent swatches, these are because I've been in here a lot. So anytime you come in here and play with this and use them in designs, it's going to save your most recently used swatches. And they're just here, so as you're working with a project, you have quick picks to go pick it again without having to go through all the menus. So we're going to click OK, and here's going to come up with that lighter blue and with a darker blue outline. A little bit prettier than what it was before which it really doesn't matter because you're going to make it your own fabric and your own thread color anyhow. So now I'm going to do next, and now it's going to generate the font. <laughs> My cats are playing on the floor, so you might be hearing them running around. Okay, so here it is, and now it comes up as save font, and right here it will come up and it says impact B A E 80 to 200. Well, these are telling me everything I have done. So impact is the name of the font. B is because I had selected bold. A is for applique. And E is because it's extended. And the sizes I chose are 80 to 200. So these are really easy for you to get to know in here. You can also go into your help uh, tab and do a search on fonts or quick fonts, and it will help you understand what a lot of these abbreviations are. But the more you do it, and the more you think about your choices that you have selected, you'll really be able to figure these out. The other thing is, is where it wants to put it, I always recommend putting in my fonts. You can put in any font that is available in the software, but I recommend the my fonts because I want to know this is what I made. So if it doesn't quite work as well, I know, oh, okay, I must have made a weird decision in making this. I haven't had a problem with these, but I still want to know it's mine. The Save to USB stick is grayed out because we did not say we wanted to save it to a machine. And right here, right now, is if I wanted to build a font book to be able to see all these fonts that I'm making, right now is the time for you to print out this category. Once we leave this page, you will not have a chance to print this. It's up to you if you want to. I used to do it. But now I just, I don't even refer to it. I just go in and look at them through my quick fonts. The next thing is if I wanted to return and do another font, I could check mark this option, which will save this font and then return and allow me to continue to do another font. Down here, I have next and previous. So this is so I can actually uh, scroll through to see each of my fonts page by page by page. Um, and then if I don't like what it's done, I could come here and go back and make other decisions to hopefully try to clean them up. But because of how I selected this and how I'm doing Apple K, I feel they're going to be pretty crisp and clear. So I'm just now going to click Finish. So now it's saving my font, and it's actually saved it into my font category. So I'm just going to close out this window. I'm going to go show you over here by pulling open my menu here, and I'm going to scroll down to My Fonts which they are in alphabetical order, so I gotta come down a ways. Here, oh, I love it when I do that. I accidentally clicked outside. My font, and I had done impact to Apple K right here. Select that. Now I'm gonna come in here and do the capital A, B, C, because this one is both uppercase and lowercase. And I'm gonna come in here and do apply, and there they are, those are my fonts. So go ahead and play with that. You could do uh, searches on true type fonts on the internet if you can't find a font you want. I had done that for my daughter. She wanted something a particular font. So I went out on the internet, did true type font with her font name, was able to get it, save it to my computer, and my quick fonts found it. So I was able to continue to play with it. 
So look for two more fonts. There's a lot more we could do in here, and we will keep them going. Have fun.